you have a... <laughs> Anyways, I was... Um... What is that? All right, that's better. Everything's good now, okay. Okay, that'll be all for now. Um, it has been a crazy week. <laughs> and uh, uh, as, as many of you have heard, um, this is the, the, just the craziest time for a uh, conference for me. Um, Sunday morning I did uh, tell my church that my wife and I are going to, and my, my kids, we're trans, uh, what, what are you, transitioning um, out of the church. And that's a crazy thing. I mean, some of you guys are getting ready to start a church, and uh, I did that 16 years ago. And you get so tight with these people. You fall in love with these people. You, uh, you lead them to the Lord. You see so many of them come to know the Lord. You see them before they knew the Lord. And you have these talks with them. They give their life to the Lord. You see things change. You see things in their lives where, where relatives die and, and, and relationships end. And you go through this heartache with them. And then suddenly you feel like the Lord is calling you to do something else. And that's a difficult, that's, that's a very difficult thing to say to this group of people that, that, that we're, we're a family. We, you know, so many of us are a family and we're so in love with each other. And, and so this past Sunday was the time when I, I said to them, you know, I, I got to do some things. I, I feel like the Lord's calling me elsewhere. You know, Matt Carter shared, which, gosh, you know, I was at the Verge conference with Matt and everything that came out of his mouth, I just go, oh. Amen, amen, amen. Everything that the Lord was teaching him, it, it, just, it, it was everything he was teaching me as well. And so to hear his story and where Austin Stone is going, um, I, don't, I think he's already left the room, but I just want to publicly say, man, I love that guy. Uh, I want a cardboard cut out of him. Um, and uh, it's just the way the, the Lord is leading him and, and the direction. I believe that God's leading a lot of us. I mean, some of this move is this uncomfortable sign. It's weird that he quoted, I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over. It's weird that he quoted Amos chapter 5. It's so weird that he quoted that because when I was in college and I was feeling a lot of this, ah, you know, I'm just not doing what the Lord wants me to do. There's more to this. It was when my Old Testament professor was teaching Amos chapter 5. And I remember when he got to uh, Amos chapter 6, verse 1, and it says, Woe to those who are at ease in Zion, those who feel secure on the mountain of Samaria. He says, Woe to those who are, I believe in the NIV or NASB, whatever he was using, Woe to those who are comfortable in Zion. And he just confronted them about, you know, this, this world of need and all these things they weren't doing. And then he says in chapter 6, verse 1, Woe to those who are comfortable. And he was talking about how they're just sitting there, getting fat, and enjoying their lives. And, and he says, you, you're, you're acting like everything's okay when it's not. And it's so cool to see how that passage moved him to go do that. Because I remember as a college student, sitting at, it was my first year at a Bible college. I was a junior in college. I transferred in. And I just remember I was already just feeling so comfortable. And, and when he gave that talk, I said, you know what, I've got to do something. And I remember that, that, that day, you know, a bunch of my friends were going to the beach. And I just go, I, I just can't go to the beach. I can't do it. I've got to do something else. And, you know, go, go, have a good time. And I just remember getting in my car and just driving into downtown L.A. It scared me to death. You know, just totally scared me to death. I had just moved down there. I didn't even know my way around. Just parked my car, started walking around the block. The things that God did that day in my life when I stepped out in faith, the sense of, God, you're with me. I am so scared right now, but I know I'm here for a reason. And I can't even tell you all the things that happened at that time. And I started going down there every weekend. It became my, my thing. And I got to hang out with these street people and build relationships with them as this 20-year-old kid. that did, I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I, I felt the presence of God. I, I, I just sensed He was there, and it was so good. It was so good. And, 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 and it, just in a few days, you know, really, really, it's been a week or two since I made the decision and told the elders, I'm telling you, all those feelings are coming back. All of those experiences with God again, like, God, this feels like it did when I was in college. It felt like it did when I was in high school. It felt like when I, when I first fell in love with you. 
It felt like when I started the church and I was scared. But, but, but you know, you get in these positions and it gets comfortable. And I, I, you know, this is the theme of this, you know, conference transformed. I got to tell you, just in a few days, I feel like I'm, I'm alive again. You know, I was talking to Dave Gibbons, who was here earlier. And, uh, and, and uh, when I talked to him about a week ago, he goes, Francis, I've known you for just about a year. This is the happiest I've ever seen you. This is the most full of life and the healthiest I've seen you. I go, I know, I can't even explain it. It's just, I feel alive again in my faith. And not that God was not doing great things at Cornerstone Church, absolutely. But, and I believe he's going to continue to do even greater things in my absence. I think it's going to create a greater dependency on the Holy Spirit, which I'm so excited about. And, and, and I love the elders, and we're going all in the same direction. They're my brothers. We're family. We're going to stay tight. You, you know, so all these great things. But I got to just say, in my own life, it's like, I am so alive. I feel so alive right now of going on another adventure, just God and I, and go, okay, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? But um, when I announced it on Sunday, um, I had my wife come up and just share for a couple minutes. And it's funny because after church, uh, after the service at lunch, my 10-year-old looks at me and she goes, Dad, it seemed like you, 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 know, you were talking, but then Mom came up for like two minutes and she gave the whole message. <laughs> Just, those were exact words. It just seemed like in two minutes she gave the whole message, and then you went up and talked again. <laughs> I, I go, it did feel like that, because when every service, and it was different, every service, when she spoke, the Spirit just filled her. And it's so awesome to, to be joined with someone like that. You know, this is, this is the gal who, you know, two weeks into our marriage, I said, I think the Lord wants me to start a church and you're going to have to support us. <laughs> I'm not taking any money. And is that cool? Um, two weeks after getting married, and for her to say, you know, I believe that you were going to lead us um, wherever the Lord wanted us to go. And so if that's what you feel called to do, let's do it. And now 16 years later, to go on this journey again, I, I want to show you the clip, the two-minute clip um, of just Lisa sharing this last Sunday morning because I... God just made her such a powerful, powerful woman of God. As a wife, there have been times in our marriage that it has been more of a, a leadership. Francis saying, this is where I feel like God is calling us. And, and there's times when I've had to say, okay, I'm just going to trust that and I'm going to submit because I believe that God is leading us through you. Maybe because this is a bigger decision, um, this time in the Lord's graciousness, he has just been wrestling with me and dealing with me and bringing me to this place where I feel like I'm just right on the same page with him. And it's, it's just a blessing to me from the Lord. Um, I think it's, for recently, how it started for me um, was the scriptures that we've been reading as a church family going through First John over and over, and then reading through Luke over and over, and, and now into Acts. But I have to say the book of Luke just was rocking my world personally. All, I thought this commitment that Christ calls us to is so serious. You know, and in Luke chapter 9, when he says, anybody who wants to come after me has to deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Because whoever wants to save his life is going to lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And over and over in my mind, I would be thinking about this deny yourself. And I think, I, I don't know what it looks like to deny myself. I am, I'm such a creature of comfort and habit and safety. I even said to Francis recently, I feel like there's just like a gravitational pull on my life for, for safety and comfort. And I, I, it's almost like it's strapping me down in these rubber bands and I'm, I have to push against it. And I know God is calling me to push against it and to go outside of what I know and what is safe and what feels comfortable with my children. You know, for you ladies, I mean, as a mama, do I, 
do I have fears about taking my four children to Thailand? Yeah, I do. Do I have fears about going to a big city like L.A.? Yeah, I do. And maybe that's funny to some of you. I know there's people that have given up so much for the gospel. But God is really asking me personally to say, are you, are you willing to lay down your own life and the lives of your children for me? And as I was reading through these scriptures in Luke, it was chapter uh, 14 that really stuck with me the most. It says, great crowds accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And towards the end of that chapter, he says, So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. And so stirring in me is just this desire to say, Lord, I want to be a disciple. I do want you. I do want to lay down my life. I do want to give it all up. Even though in my flesh I don't, I want to cling to what I know. I want to cling to you because I love you and I know you. But God is calling us out, and we can't deny that. And I pray that you would pray for us, and I will be praying for you too, but I'm praying that you would pray for me as a mom and just my own personal struggles. But there's nothing I want more than to hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. And what kind of leaders would we be if we heard the voice of the Lord leading us and didn't obey? We, would, we wouldn't be anything to you then. And so I just hope that you will be able to pray for us and encourage us as we take a step of faith that is not something we saw years ago. I think we would have both said, oh, we'll be at Cornerstone forever. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit has said differently. <clears throat> Every service it was different. Every service it was so powerful. As she described the feelings of a mother of three little girls and a little boy. And, uh, but just to let go. And just how passionately. Man, the last service, I, I, we didn't get it on. But she talked about just wanting to hear those words so badly. Well done. And you guys, can we just forget for a moment that we're church planters or pastors or whatever because this really has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with what my wife was talking about. It had to do with being a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ and actually hearing those words well done. That's what so much of my life is about. It's not about how can I become this church planter or this or that. It's just, man, am I going to do whatever he tells me to do right now? Am I open to his will right now? Seth, that I may have shared with you before, but it's that, it's that I, I just remember having a dream year, years ago where, 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 you know, one of those dreams that was so realistic, and I thought that I died in my dream. First time in my life I ever died in a dream. I always got away somehow, you know, and this was the one where I died, and I remember just in my bed, it was so real. I was on my knees, and my face was in my pillow. You ever have a dream so real, you're moving, and, and you know, like you're trying to catch a baseball or something and and this one I'm on my face and I am just shaking I'm literally sweating that's I, I'm not trying to make too much of this you know I graduated from the master seminary so you know nothing supernatural it, it's just a I I I you know it's one of those things where I'm shaking I'm sweating I'm terrified I really thought I was in the presence of God and my face is in my pillow and I'm thinking about everything I know about him 
I'm thinking about Revelation chapter 4, and I'm picturing this throne before me, and I'm picturing this being, this holy being, and these angels screaming out. I'm picturing lightning and thunder, and, and then all the, you know, the, the, the 24 elders, the 100 million angels. The whole thing is going on, and, I'm, and I just died, and I'm coming before that God right there. Man, this was all in my dream, and my heart is just pounding. I was so scared. Man, and I, you know, I'm not scared to die. I mean, shoot me, go ahead. I, I, I'm not fearful that way, but there is something crazy about what's it going to be like when I see God. And that's what I'm talking about here. It was that moment where I was just terrified. My heart's pounding. I'm, swe- you know, cold sweat. And then the thought occurs to me, maybe this is a dream. You, you know, you ever, you, you do that in the middle of your dream, you think, wait a second, you know, this might be a dream, and you don't know, and so you just think, so I, I you got to shake yourself, you got to do something, and so I just think, okay, I'm going to lift my head up as fast as I can, as hard as I can, so if I'm asleep, this should jolt me awake, and, but what a terrifying feeling to, to think, this is the moment, this is the moment, I'm going to stand before God, and, and, and so I'm going to lift my head when I count to three, and I'll either see God or my headboard. And I just go, one, two, three. And I just jerk my head up, and I, I see my bed. And I go, oh, okay, good. It was a dream. I'm sweating. I'm going, wow, that was so insane. But, but I bring that up because what if that's the way it works? Okay. What if that's the way it works? I don't know. Maybe we really do just fall on our face and there's God before us. What are you going to feel at that moment? And what, what, if, what if you're on your face and you actually hear the voice of God at that moment and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Can you imagine what you would feel at that moment? Think about that. Think about hearing that out of the mouth of God. He just says, well done, good and faithful servant. Just, I, man, I get the chills just saying that. You know, I, I would just bawl. I would just scream. I would just shake. I would be like, man, this is all I ever wanted was to hear those words. Man, and, and at that moment, is there anything else in the world you would rather have than to hear those two words coming out of the mouth of God? See, this is nothing about how big of a church, how many churches, can I be this, can I be that? It's about, oh man, I've got to hear those words from God. It's about being a follower of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about today. Man, I'm not the, you know, guy on strategies or this or that. I'm just this person that's going... I think this is what the Spirit's leading me to. And I'm looking at my life, and I'm going, it's so comfortable right now. And every time I'd fly in LAX, and I'd see all these lights, I'd go, gosh, I think I'm supposed to be in the middle of that, but that scares me. Man, you ever, you ever just driven around? There's just millions, literally millions of people in one city. And you're just going, what do I even do? How do I even start? What am I going to do, build a building that seats a million? You, you know, it, it's just, what do you do? How do you reach it? And, and it's like, hey, Lord, this has got to be a supernatural act of you. But I'm scared, you know, and we're going, hey, let's go away. Let's go away to just some third world country, whether it's Thailand or India or Africa. Let's just get away as a family. And let me just get alone with this book and hear from the Lord and say, Where do you, what do you want me to do? I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever. I want to hear well done. It's like what my wife said. I go, I just, she just so badly wants to hear those two words, and I do too. And, and it's not, it's not. Other people tell you, good job. Other people email you, say, oh, I like what you said here. I, I emailed, you know, I like your book. I like this. I like that. It just doesn't really matter. I, I keep looking. 